It's very intimidating for me to stand up here and talk to you about sharpening scissors. Uh, I, I've always made no bones about um, that I am not the world's greatest sharpener. I've never done the certification. I'm kind of a little nervous about it tomorrow. Uh, Dennis says I'm going to do okay, right? Um, but um, I've never made any bones about being the best sharpener. But I think because sharpening did not come easy to me, I didn't have any natural talent at it, I'm, I'm a pretty patient teacher. And I've taught a lot of people to sharpen shears, and a lot of them have gone on to teach me things and are much better sharpeners than I am. Sharpeners than I am. But um, what I want to talk about today is that there's some basics of sharpening that you've got to do regardless of what machine you're using or um, you know, what your technique is. There's just some things that have to be done. And uh, most of us you know, know what those are, but maybe you haven't really articulated and thought about it. And, that's, and I've got some um, kind of interesting videos too that I took, some close-ups. Um, I bought one of those little microscopes and had some fun with it. So that's what I want to talk about today is, you know, back to basics. And as, as I said, most of you know I used to be a school teacher before I got into this. I taught high school science. <coughs> and it's much more fun teaching scissor sharpeners because y'all are motivated. <laughs> don't throw uh, things most of the time. Yeah, don't throw things. So. It, it's kind of dangerous being a school teacher. But um, some of the things you need to, you know, we need to know is, um, and I came up with seven basic points that you have to know when you go to sharpen scissors, is, you know, what type of shear do you have? That, that's kind of a basic, um, you know, is it a convex bevel? I'm assuming most everybody in this room knows the difference. If you call me with a sharpening question, the first thing I'm going to ask you is what kind of shear is it? And not necessarily is it convex or bevel, I like to know the name brand. And I might look it up on the internet, so I'm looking at it with you, because that, that makes a difference whether shear is made, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, another basic point is you've got to know how to create a burr. Without a burr, no sharpening is going on. I mean, that's just essential. Um, and how to remove the burr. <laughs> the, two, the two go together. Um, the correct pivot tension. And all of you know that's the number one complaint from um, your stylist and your groomers is that your shears. They're, they're, they think they're dull and they're folding hair, and it's because they've got a loose screw. A lot of, lot of your customers have screw loose, don't they? Um, how to create a flat ride or home line. You've got to have that flat ride and um, whether your blades are aligned together and the optimum angle of the shears. So you've got to have these basic rules. And if any of those rules are broken, your shears aren't going to perform well properly. You've got to have all of them. Now, we talked about what type of shear do you have, you know, whether it's bevel, convex, um, and you have the convex edge, the beveled edge, sword edge, y'all all know what sword edges are. Um, you also have whether they're honed or not, some of your beveled edges will be honed shears, and you're going to take them apart, some aren't. Um, serrated. Um, one of our guys with the Sharpener's Jam a couple of years ago, I think he got the second prize for Best Ideas. Um, he just takes the serrated side, because he didn't have a serration file, and just leaves it very rough, maybe a 60 or 80 micron. And he, but the, the trick is that he tells them it is a graduated serration, that they won't see the lines on it. Sort of like bifocal glasses, you don't see the lines, it's, prog it's a progressive type of serration. Sort of like if you charge it for replacing washers, don't call them washers, call them bushings. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, it works, um, you know, it's not going to work, well, uh, it would be better than no serration at all, right, with a certification with Dennis, but it's not going to get the same point as a true serration. But there, what I'm saying, is there, there's, th there's ways around, around some of the things. Uh, whether they're curved shears. Uh, when I do in, in the uh, afternoon, for those especially the advanced people, when we do the, um, the centers back here, I'll show you how I do the ride line on curved shears, which is, uh, I came up with that. That's, um, makes that, that's always been a real difficulty. Are they lefty shears? Those of you doing the, serration, the, doing the certification, you will have a lefty shear. This is the first time we've had a lefty shear in the certification. So you have to know whether they're lefties. I've seen some people sharpen left-handed shears as a right-handed shear, and it's difficult to fix. And then, of course, are they thinners? And where are they made? Now, that's something you can't look on the shear anymore and tell where they're made. I see the smiling there. 
and it makes a difference where they're made because some of these shears are made quality and you can do a quality sharpening some of them I mean they're just no matter what you do you're not going to be able to get them to cut um, and whether they're forged or they're cast and that has to do with whether you're tweaking them or bending them now this is our um, this is the guy that makes our most expensive shear which is the Shoto and this is a gentleman in uh, he's in Taiwan he's not in Japan but he does all the workmanship from beginning to end um, uh, it's not done assembly line and that's our, our most expensive our best shear that we have uh, this is a picture of a Japanese factory I found online notice it, the flat home yeah notice it's a, it's a flat home those of you that are using you know six inch flat homes or whatever make you're using the same kind of tools that they're using in the top factories in, in Asia um, this is a Taiwan scissor factory some of, uh, this is one where uh, some of our shears are made at this factory um, this one I found online, and the fact they put it online must admit they were proud of it. This was a factory in Pakistan, and I found some other similar pictures I could have put up here. Uh, and, and then a break at the bottom. I'm not sure what that is, um, but he, he's sitting on the ground. Looks like it almost looks like he's in a cave. Well, it, it almost looks like a like a. a He's uh, convexing the shear on a belt. On a belt, yeah, yeah it's a belt yeah. standard type thing. He's got a, a some kind of flat home situation there, and he's got a, uh, a grinder too. Yeah, and I had found another picture in Pakistan where they were actually using the, like a six inch flat home, but they, it was sitting on a, like a wooden block and on the ground. They're sitting on the ground doing it. And uh, so, I mean, some of, the, and I'm not talking negative about Pakistan scissors, but I am in a way because um, some of those. You just no matter what you do, you're not going to be able to get them to cut right. You know, it's um, if they're not made right, you know, you're kind of stuck with it. <coughs> now, this is a picture of a shear that I had. You can take a look at it. it says Joel on it, biggest life, and it's straight from Pakistan. Joel doesn't even have a model that looks like this, but a hairstylist might not know, or you might not know. Uh, you know, so you can't go by what country of origin they say. You can't even go by what make it says on the shear anymore. So it's uh, it, it makes it makes it difficult. Have y'all had anybody um, um, yet um, knocking off your shears and not that I know. Of. Not that I heard there was some Benicas in Texas that came that somebody did in Pakistan, <clears throat> and I you know but I haven't been able to track them down. This is one I found on the internet. This is a fake Hikari. So even um, Hikari and they, they Hikari's got that on their website, so you can tell the difference on it. Um, I, just about all the major name brand shears, they're they're knocking them off. Now, you know, I've got some knockoff purses from Pakistan, but that's you know, it's a little bit different. So, yeah, be careful of you know where. And also, if you, I mean, you as 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 distributors, if somebody uh, approaches you, and that's how we got that fake Pakistan scissor from Joel. We did, not, fake we did not pay for it. We did not pay for it, but I had somebody that kept emailing me, kept emailing me, want me to buy their Joel scissors from Pakistan. So I finally said, well, send me a sample so I can decide, and that's how we got it. But, I mean, if someone has some scissors that you're suspicious of, you don't want to be part of this, of this continuum, because your reputation's on the line, and you've got to maintain them. So, um, so I'm going to go on to the burr. The burr is the key to sharpening. If you don't have a burr, you haven't done anything to the edge. The burr is that little raised little piece of metal. This is uh, got out of Wikipedia. Um, that's that uh, where you roll that metal up, and if that burr is not there, now sometimes you can be uh, fooled and thinking that you don't have a burr because um, I, and when last year when we did the NBTSG and I had sharpened a pair of shears and I passed it around for everybody to feel the burr. By the time the last person got it, he says, "There's no burr here." <laughs> When you feel for that burr, you've got to have very, very gentle feather-like touch on it because you don't want to knock it off. You don't want to fool yourself because you may go on and create a bigger and bigger and bigger burr thinking you don't have one because you've knocked it off with your finger. If you have very callous fingers, usually your, your ring finger or this finger are your more sensitive ones and you can feel the burr with them better than you can with your thumb or your pointer finger. Um, if your fingers are real callous, I've had people I've trained that play guitars and what have, and they're very callous. Uh, when you're doing your ride line, rub your fingers on that stone. Keep a couple of your fingers very sensitive to feeling for the burr. Um, 
This is the size of a burr. If you don't have a nicked up scissor and the sherry is just a little bit dull, this is the size of the burr. You don't have to have a big old honking burr to, to, as long as it's there, as long as you've got down below the nicks, that's all the burr you need. If you have too big a burr, can you see it over here? This little looks like a hair. I'm going to go to this one. Here's the size of a hair, there's the size of the burr. If you have those great big old burrs, you're going to shorten the life of the shears. I've got some of my customers that take care of their shears. They don't, when they give them to me for sharpening, they don't have big nicks, and so I can just create little tiny burrs like this each time. And I've been, well, Howard's shears, well, I've been sharpening for like 20 years. Um, 20, yeah. Um, they'll, they'll laugh, you know, people say, how many times, you know, how many years can I have these shears if they take care of them? Now, if he put big nicks in them, I had to take off bigger burrs, that'd be different. But if you're just doing this little teeny tiny burr each time, um, those shears are going to last a long time. And you see, here, here's the burr right there. Look at that little tiny one. What's that dollar for? He was paying for his coffee. Paying for his coffee. I know, we sound like we're such poor, such poor people. We actually are, but you know. I, our goal in life is to either for me to make as much money as I pay my daughter Misty, <laughs> or as much money as my sharpeners make after they go out and train. <laughs> But um, there's the, those of you that vendors know, it's, it's not what, it's not what they, you think it is. Um, but that's the size of the burr. Is that surprising anybody? I mean, because I, I know uh, a lot of times when I've trained people that have already been sharpening, they're used to making a great big old burr. Now, you're feeling for the burr, you also want to look for the burr. Do you see how that has that little white line right here, that little shiny spot? That's a place there's no burr. Now, if you were feeling for the burr, you might feel right here at the tip, you might feel back here, and you think you've got the burr all the way down. And then when you cut with that shear, this little area is not going to cut right. So I always feel for the burr, and then I look in the light, and I'm looking for a little ed little spot there where I'm not at that, not there. And um, sometimes it's only like one millimeter, two millimeters, but you'll see the little bit of light reflecting in there. Just turn it back and forth. And so you need to go back and get that spot. Oh, there's my little fancy arrow. I had fun with this. Now this is a video, and I'm going to show the edge. This is what I, oh, with my new little microscopic uh, camera here. And can you see there, with right here at that area, I'm not quite to the edge. So you've got to look at it in the light. That's going to show it again. You can see how that angle sort of changes right there. Do you see that? I think that's that's a spot there where I, I, you don't have a good good edge work there. Now, if you have to use um, a visor with uh, extra uh, or mic, uh, uh, not a magn uh, magnifier or you something get cheap like that, that. Dollar stores. In with a high magnification helps. Yeah, yeah, it's important to see what you're doing and the light's important. You've got to have good lighting, you've got to have good eyes.